Patrick in East Lansing, Michigan. Hey, Patrick, how's how's my old hometown okay. doing? <laughs> Hi, Tom. I'm I'm going through South Lansing to help Dana Nessel. I've been doing reproductive freedom on the doors to talk to people about taking away the, uh, you know, bodily autonomy and the right to survive. Oh, good on you. But my son is an organizer in Ann Arbor, got to see Bernie. My daughter got a picture with him. And I just have to tell you, having listened to Bernie in um, Madison and, and now in Philadelphia and, and then watching the Ann Arbor speech, he's teaching Democrats what has to happen. And all my conversations on the doors have suggested to me that the reason Democrats are struggling is because the party's not committed to what they know would give them a winning majority coalition. And Bernie understands this better than anyone yep. because the way he talks – I mean, he just, 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 I just wrote it all down, and I want to give it to you quickly because it's so persuasive. He's talking about 60% living paycheck to paycheck. 1% has more wealth than 92% of the people. Three people have more than 50%. And he said that was in 2019, and they got a trillion-dollar increase in wealth. And then he just started marching through. He said, We've got, uh, you've got less earnings than 50 years ago. We have to strengthen unions. We've got the billionaires dominating politics and money bombing our elections. We have to overturn Citizen United. And contrary to what you just said, he said that means a constitutional amendment. And he said we did it to get direct election of senators. We did it to get the right to vote for women. We did it to get 18-year-olds to vote. And we've got to march up that mountain, and we've got enough people. He said 70 percent of the people support unions. So, And then he just picked apart the inflation issue without running away from it. And I listened to Biden and I listened to Obama and they ran away from it. Yeah. They talked about Medicare. They talked about stopping a government shutdown. They talked about tax breaks for the wealthy. But they didn't do what Bernie did. Bernie said 50,000 homeless, 85 million uninsured, 45 million in student debt. And the Federal Reserve is going to give us more unemployment and the slide in wages will continue unless we democratize the Fed. Bam, bam, bam. And if the Democratic Party wants to win, and I'd leave you with this, they have to understand why they're struggling. And David K. Johnston, in his D.C. report, he's just a national treasure. You know, he's done all the work oh, yeah. on Trump. He got, and he's a national treasure. Go to his dcreport.org and read about the 60 million wage earners at the bottom who make less than the 237,000 executives. OK, and he talks about the pay raises for the, this group of elite workers who are the donor class. That's who the Democratic Party serves and that's who gives them their money. And that's who funds their campaigns and staffs their campaigns. And that's who they listen to and they cater to. Those people are getting two point seven percent increases above inflation. And the average worker is getting less than inflation. Right, they're running three percent behind inflation. A $1,200 loss, and that's before the increase in inflation. So what happened in the last 8 to 12 months? Worst inflation in 40 years. A 10% cut in real wages. If you don't do what Bernie did and you go straight to where people live and you say to them, we have the natural majority, we can improve your standard of living, they're running the table, and for that to change, we have to have what Adam Tu says, a wealth tax and financial regulation. Democratic Party won't go near financial regulation because – there and or the tech monopolies or right. the wealth tax and the tax because they're getting money from billionaires in all those categories this is why it's so important to get that billionaire money out of politics it's corrupting our party as well as the republican party. and by not getting hr1 done and not asking for supreme court reform and filibuster reform they lost their window yeah and they've got to own it because if they lose bad enough this time and they own how they blew it this time and they blew it between 2008 and 2010 Maybe they'll get bad enough for the natural majority to emerge with a party that will actually support them. And that's what you need to be saying to people. We can actually improve people's economic lives, but we need a party willing to do it. And the Democratic Party, God love them. I support them in every possible way, but they're not your friend when it gets down to the end. What you're you describing is left-wing populism, basically. I'm the describing Democratic building union power. Yeah. Tom, building you one last thing. Richard Freeman at Harvard since 79 has been talking about what unions do. Mm. And he did a report for People for the American Way. And he said the decline of unions has been a 35 percent loss in wealth and income. And that's based on 12 economic studies. You can look it up. You could bring them on your show. That's a 2016 report. And the Democrats were two votes short of union reform. 
Build unions. Get outside of the party politics and build unions, build grassroots organizations. That's how this change gets done. And I'd like to see you, Tom, recruiting your listeners to join these groups that are going to bring about the real change. That's what moves the Democratic Party. That's the only way any of this has ever gotten done. And that should be m much more of what your show is about. Which of these groups are you recommending, Patrick? Uh, personally, I would join the union movement and I would join groups that are seeking change. I am personally involved with the Quaker lobby. I'm involved with global justice. I'm involved with the ACLU. I'm involved with people who are actually outside of the Democratic Party. We're the backbone of the party. 